Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech and iOS 16.7 released today to all iOS 16 supported devices that are still on iOS 16. iOS 16.7 is out to everyone around the world at the same time and is available for the iPhone 8, 8 Plus and newer all the way up to the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. I'll talk about that in just a moment. The overall size of this update was not very large. It came in at 379.6 megabytes on my iPhone 14 Pro and was about the same on the iPad Air as well. Now, along with this, Apple also released a ton of other updates. The first iOS 17 update with iOS 17.0.1. There's new watch updates and new Mac updates as well. Now, if you're on iOS 17, you won't have this update if you have a newer device than the iPhone 10. However, if you're on iOS 16.6 or earlier, even on iPhone 14 Pro, you'll see this update with the other option to upgrade to iOS 17 below. I think this is the end of the line for anything newer than the iPhone 10, meaning you can no longer actually download the files to downgrade to this version on the other devices. Apple has made those files available for the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and iPhone 10, but not the newer phones. So the only way to upgrade this, at least that I'm aware of right now, is software updates if you're not on iOS 17 yet. Now this particular update does not have a modem update, but let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about, and you'll see the build number is 20H19. Now the odd thing is this update's actually showing a ton of information for previous updates where it's saying it has 21 new emoji and includes other enhancements, bug fixes, and security updates. However, it actually doesn't have all of those updates. That's from a previous one where they optimized this before. So it's a little odd that they're actually showing this under that update, but they are showing different things for the security updates we'll talk about in just a moment. Now, as far as new features and changes, well, there's not really anything that they've mentioned. They basically have said this is for bug fixes and security updates and is recommended for all users. So just like iOS 17.0.1, there's nothing really to mention as far as new features. The notification bug has not been fixed on either of them. You can repeat this over and over and it will show up and they haven't really mentioned if there's any fixes for the camera or anything else. Now, Apple also introduced security updates with iOS 16.7. You can see all of them released today on their security website, where we have 17.0.1, 16.7, and iPadOS 16.7, and it gives the models that it pertains to here. If we go into this, give it a second to load, if we scroll down, one thing is they actually say additional entries are coming soon. So there's a few that are mentioned, but maybe they'll have some more security fixes that they're just not mentioning yet. And they're for the kernel, security, and WebKit. Basically the underlying code of Safari, as well as security, and then the underlying code of the OS. And what it says under security is an impact for a malicious app that may have been able to bypass signature validation. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited against versions of iOS before iOS 16.7. They fixed it with a certificate validation issue, which was addressed. So they do that, then give thanks to the person that submitted the issue. And additionally, there's additional recognition below. So some very important security updates, but as far as bugs and everything else, well, we don't really know other than the notification issue I showed you before. As far as the overall battery or performance, let's take a look at the battery life of this device. And again, for some reason it was showing the wrong information there, but if we go under battery, battery health and charging, you'll see here that I'm at 100%. This was not my main device, so that makes sense, and I haven't used it regularly. However, people on iOS 16.6 have reported pretty good battery life, or 16.6.1. Most people say battery life is pretty decent, some people say it's better on iOS 17. It just depends who you ask, but in general, it seems like they've fixed most of the issues with iOS 16. When it comes to overall performance, performance seems to be exactly the same. We'll take a look at benchmarks in a little bit, but this is mainly just a security update with a few bug fixes that they've mentioned. Things like ProMotion, scrolling, everything else seems to be nice and smooth. But in general, I don't really notice a difference as far as performance goes. It seems to be just as fast as before. So I think most people will be happy about that. And if you're wondering if you should install iOS 16.7? Well, I definitely would just for those security updates, even if you're on an iPhone 14 Pro or 14 Pro Max and don't want to upgrade to iOS 17 just yet. This should give you that additional security and of course, hopefully fix some bugs. And I really wish Apple would let us know what those bugs are. They definitely should let us know exactly what they are as it's not very helpful to anyone if we don't know specifically what they're fixing. So hopefully they update their documentation in the future and tell us what specifically they've fixed.
Additionally, we're waiting for iOS 17.1 betas. That's where we'll start to see more features, maybe the journal app and more. But if we go into the calendar, I would expect those to start probably next week sometime. Typically we have them the week of the release of iOS 17 or the major update. However, we haven't seen that. So probably sometime next week, since the iPhone 15, 15 plus 15 pro and 15 pro max launch tomorrow, along with the Apple watch ultra two series and series nine and AirPods USB C case. So other than that, I'm really not expecting any other changes. iOS 16.7.1 could be later on, but that's as Apple continues to address security issues. As far as benchmarks, we had 2,565 compared to last time, 2,555. So a little bit better. And then multi-core 6,365 compared to 6,164. So a little bit better there on both single and multi-core. So I really wouldn't expect any change in performance, maybe a few gains here and there. And that was run right after installing the update. So I think it's pretty good overall. As far as anything else, if you found it, let me know in the comments below. I don't think there's any major changes that I've seen so far, but if you've noticed any bugs that have been fixed, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.